if you want to become a successful trader and consistently move your trading account in the right direction, you have to learn how to trade candlesticks. And once you master how to analyze candlestick patterns and you're able to make good decisions based on that analysis, you will become the trader that you've always wanted to become. And that's why in this video, I'm going to be revealing to you the candlestick patterns that if you learn them like the back of your hand, this will enable the infinite money glitch for your trading. And as always, these are real examples that I personally traded and have documented. So you should see these on your screen right now. Let's hit the charts. All right. So in front of us, we have US 30 and you can see my markups for the last several days. We're going to jump into the setups. But first, let's talk about the pattern. So this is a very simple pattern to identify, but it does have a couple of components that we need to break down individually. So you have a really good idea of when to anticipate this pattern, how to identify it, and most importantly, how to execute it. The pattern starts off with consolidation, and this can be in a variety of forms. It can be your traditional ranging sideways moving consolidation. This can be at a angle, meaning something like this, where we can see price clearly consolidating, but moving up, almost creating some type of range. So that one is at an angle, and this one is your typical support and resistance here. So this is ideally what we're looking for. And, and the great thing about this is this is a pattern that can be traded on almost every time frame. We don't have to change the way that we trade based on if we're a scalper or intraday trader or if we're a swing trader. So we can do all of what we're going to talk about today from a monthly all the way down to a one minute time frame. And I'm going to do a full top down analysis video for this US 30 to show you exactly how I landed on the setups and the directional bias that I'm going to talk about today. And most importantly, talking about these key areas and the patterns on a higher time frame, and then how I also narrow down into those key areas to look for the same exact patterns. It's extremely fractal. So let's continue with this pattern. So first and foremost, consolidation. We want to see some type of consolidation. And when we have this, it's safe to assume that there are a lot of opinions being formed. We're going to have people looking to buy off of this, perhaps people selling off resistance. That's typically what they're used for, a ceiling and a floor, buying and selling opportunities or trying to catch some type of breakout, meaning people might have buy stops along this level here looking for a breakout, trying to catch price breaking through this level. You're also going to have people that look for this move here and they're going to try to get back on this new found floor here once the roof is broken, this resistance level, and they're going to look for that break retest. Same thing on the bottom side. You're going to have people that might have, if it's a bearish environment, you're going to have people doing the same thing. You're going to have sell stops right here. People looking to catch that breakout, something like this. Or when price does break it, they'll also look for some type of break retest, something like that. With this, there are a lot of orders being placed here and there is inevitably a lot of liquidity building above and below this area here. And primarily this is important because it's enticing traders. It's inducing traders to make a decision too soon. And what we want to wait for is price to whipsaw, right? It looks like a stop hunt. We want to see price aggressively break out to one side. So if we're in a bearish environment, we want to see it break to the upside first and vice versa. If we're in a buying scenario of higher time frame is showing bullish, we want to see it break out to the downside first. And then when this happens, we want to see price aggressively push in the opposite direction. First, we have consolidation. Then based on the higher time frame view and structure, we want to see price break out to one side and then aggressively push to the other side and then making a higher high or in a bearish environment, a lower low, which would look something like this. And when it breaks this low and then closes below and we get that lower low confirmed, we get that break of structure confirmed. This is the pattern and it's super, super simple to identify. But then we can take it a step further. Once this happens, then we can really simply just throw our fib tool on the swing high to the swing low. And there you go. That can be a very
very, very simple way that you take advantage of these patterns. Look for a pullback into your kill zone, which for me, that's 71 to the 886. I know a lot of people like the 618, but you can gauge your kill zone on your parameters. Essentially, we're just looking for price to retrace. The deeper retracement, you're going to get a better price. A better price means a smaller stop loss. A smaller stop loss equals a bigger risk to reward. So essentially, we're looking for price to come back up into the 71 to the 886, somewhere in this area. And like I said, the further it goes, the better discounted price you're going to get. And then we would look for a continuation targeting lows. Now, with that, we can also take it one step further. So the candlestick pattern, now that we have a candlestick formation right here at the top, I like to see an engulfing candle pattern. That would look something along the lines of this. So we wanna see price push up and make a nice, strong, green, bullish candle. And then we wanna see it followed by a nice, strong, bearish, engulfing red candle like this. I obviously have blue and black candles, but most people are gonna be using green and red candlesticks. So I'm just referencing these two colors, the default colors for most charts, just to keep things super simple. We would look for this pattern right here. And then what we can do is we can look at the open of this candle and that would be our entry. And we would just look to see if that candle is in the 71 to 886. And if you don't see a candle pattern like this, sometimes you have to shop around and look at the time frame above and below on the one that you've identified. So if this is a 30 minute time frame, I'd either flick down to the 15 or flick up to the one hour just to see if I can find this candlestick pattern. If you don't find a candle candlestick pattern like this on the time frame you're trading or above or below, that's perfectly okay. Just lean into the FIPS and just look for a retracement and you'll still be able to take advantage of these patterns. So now that we have the breakdown of this candlestick pattern and this candlestick formation, let's go take a look at the setups that I took advantage of to start this week in the first week of May. Okay, so here's my markups and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just erase everything here. Just to keep the charts super, super clean. And I want you to just take a moment and see if you notice anything. And this is something I want you to go pull up any pair. It doesn't have to be an indice. It can be metal, it can be crypto, it can be Euro USD, it can be anything. And I want you to go take some time and I want you to go find strong moves in the market, right? Strong impulsive moves. So you can see between here and here, we have this consultant consolidation right in the middle. That's called a flag pattern. That is a form of consolidation that follows an impulsive move like this and is a strong indication of a continuation move like this. But I want you to go look at the price action leading up to the move here. Now, this was the first setup that I took advantage of, which we're going to discuss in just a moment. But look up here. Same thing. You have consolidation. Price broke up to the upside before an impulsive move. Consolidation and and then if we zoom in a little bit, we can see more consolidation in the form of a flag. We can see it moving sideways right here. Here is our range. This is Asian session. That's what this white background represents. Then as soon as we came into London, which is this green background right here, this is significant because London introduces more volatility, more volume into the market. And we can see price spiked up to the upside and then it broke down, which led us to this massive move here. Same thing here. After after that big move, we saw price just consolidate and move sideways. I'll throw some quick annotations here. We can see price just moving sideways. We have a resistance and we have our support. And again, look at what took place before the move. Price pushed up, looking like it was breaking above this level. And then it did a 180, showing a massive bearish impulsive move to the downside. Now again, even here, it wasn't as defined here, but it's doing the exact same thing. We can see price after this move at the end of New York. We have Asian sessions starting to pull back, giving a little bit of a flag. So we can see some consolidation here. We can see price moving sideways. We can see those highs and we can see this area here. And again, before this big move, we can see price pushed up here, painted a nice engulfing candle, peaked right above these highs before it dropped. And even here, it did the exact same thing. If I drop down to a 15 minute, you can see it has 
had some sideways moving price action, price poked up and then aggressively dumped off to the downside. Go take some time and look at what takes place before price either does a big move to the upside or a big move to the downside, right? You'll see it everywhere, even here, right? Price moving sideways here, a little bit of consolidation, price pushed up above highs before it ran off. More sideways. This is what I really love to see here. This was last week. We can see price just moving sideways here. Big consolidation. And again, price looked like it was breaking up to the upside, slammed down. And then we can see price came right back up into the kill zone. And we're going to really dial this in in just a moment. I'm just showing you a couple of examples. And there it is. Price pulled right back up into the kill zone before continuing. So again, just go take some time. You can see it here. Price was moving sideways. If I go to a higher time frame, it'll consolidate that a bit. Price moved sideways. Looks like it was breaking to the downside before it shot up. Go and don't take my word for it. Just go back as far back as you'd like on any pair and go look at what takes place prior to almost every significant move in the market. And we can even take it a step further. We can also correlate with this with time. All of these things will happen at specific times. We're either looking for London or the overlap to produce manipulation. And then we can time this with major red folder economic news events. So a lot of what took place this week so far, we had ADP, we had unemployment, we had FOMC, and then we have NFP coming up tomorrow. So let's dive into this price action here. And again, in my next video, I'm going to do a full top down showing you how I use these same patterns on a higher time frame, a much higher scale, daily, weekly, monthly to be able to determine where price is going and from where and then also targets as well. Then we drop in and we can refine. So again, you can see here, here see this red zone here. This was CPI from last month. So if I just jump up to a higher time frame really quickly, just to give you a glimpse of what I'm talking about here, let's jump up to a daily. Look at this move here. Price was moving sideways on a higher time frame, just like it did here. Double top price spiked up, smash down, double top price spiked up before the move. That's where price ended up coming back. Look, move sideways, price spiked up, looked like it was breaking up to the upside, came all the way back to this up candle here to this point of interest. You can see it here, previous CPI event. That's exactly where price started to break down. And that was the overall bias for my, my trade setups for this week. They were all inside this move here. So let's dive into those right now. Okay, so here was the first one here. And I woke up and this was a really nice play right here. So we can see Asian just moved sideways. Here is the consolidation. And then as soon as London opened up, we can see price spiked up. And then we have that move to the downside. Nice impulsive move. You really want to see a strong 180 move. And there we can see our candle pattern, the last up candle followed by a bearish engulfing candle. So that was my first point of interest. I'm going to mark that up. Now, the next point of interest, I also noticed it was doing the same thing right here. So if I just go back just a little bit to here, I noticed it wasn't by much, but price did spike up here. So I couldn't see the candle pattern. So I dropped down a time frame. Now you can see the pattern. So again, if you find a setup, just like I talked about earlier, you can flick below or above the time frame you view the price action on, and you can see the pattern here, that last up candle fall by engulfing. So again, it wasn't by much, but we can see we had this little break retest level here and we saw a price spike up above those highs before it painted an engulfing candle and more importantly, broke structure and made a lower low here. Now, where I was looking for entry was either this point of interest here or the initial one at the top. I was fully prepared to execute both just mainly because I was really confident in my higher time frame directional bias and I also had really, really good risk to reward. Now with a pair like US 30 or any indice, I am looking for patterns or if a pattern is present, like we have here, I am looking for entry at equity. Equity is at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. And this is significant because this is the open for the New York Stock Exchange. US 30 is comprised of 30 stocks. US 100, 100 stocks. S&P 500, 500 stocks. So when the New York Stock Exchange opens, that is the insert of volatility for a pair like US 30. So I'm going to mark this right up on the screen here. So there is 
clarity right here at that dotted vertical line. So here is my spot number one. Now, typically, I also want to point out in most cases, you're not going to have two different points of interest like that. So this one, initially, if you just saw something like this, all you're focusing on is the top. But since I saw a new manipulation candle, a new sweep of highs, and then a new structure point, that's what brought my attention to the next point of interest, which was this one here. Otherwise, I focus on the top. And if there are two, you can focus on just the top one because that's the least risky. That's the start of the move. Or you can look to take both. And again, trading is about playing the numbers. If only one of these works out, I'm going to be in really good shape here, especially if I'm only risking one or two percent and getting really good risk to reward. So here was my first one up here. That was my first target, as you probably saw at the beginning of this video. And then we had a deeper target here. And then we have the daily swing low, which was even lower. So that was my first primary. And here was the next one. So you can see this one up here was a one to eight. And this one was a one to 11. Now I didn't catch all that. I just caught enough move because for as you can see, this was the start of a new pay period on my funded accounts after getting a payout. I was focused on either one of these. I was really liking the price action. So what we're going to do is there is the second one. So once I saw that swing low, that is when I started focusing on this second point of interest right here. And at this dotted line, that is when I'm focusing on entry. So right at 930, this is where I'm looking for price to pull up here. And you can set sell limits on these or buy limits in a buying scenario, or you can market execute if you have the availability in your trading and in front of your setup. Otherwise, I would just focus on limit orders. It's always going to be your safest bet if somebody is working a full time job. So I'm going to slow this down a little bit and we're going to check out the price action right at this spot here. As soon as price came up here and I saw the reaction, I was able to market execute it and the rest was history. So there was the spike up and I'm going to move that dotted line out of the way and you can really see the accuracy here. That thing came right up, respected the second candle here, the second manipulation candle and just showed a huge reaction. I was able to get a couple scalp entries on this and was able to set myself up for a really good week. I ended up, I think, extracting right around $9,000 on my 200K accounts. I had a couple of them. And then I also had a couple of setups that I was able to take advantage of on Wednesday for the ADP news event and on the FOMC news event. So also what I'm going to do is in addition to the clip that you already saw here, you can see that this is a live account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on history. So I'm going to click on week and you're going to be able to see all of those US 30 positions. And right here, you're going to see just under 30,000 in three days of trading. Here is the main account here, just under $30,000 on a live account. And again, let's just go right to the live account. So you can see right there. So again, we're not talking in hindsight here. And I also want to make it perfectly clear that having massive days like that is not the norm, but it does happen when you get to a certain level experience. And that's why I refer to this pattern pattern and this candlestick formation as the infinite money glitch. So really quickly to wrap up this video, let's keep moving down and I'm going to show you some of the ones that I took advantage of yesterday. So I'm going to just get out of this replay mode here and you will see here was the pattern here. So here was FOMC. I'll just jump up to a higher time frame so we can see it. So here was the consolidation. So this was my bias coming for this low and another low, but we can see it spiked up above the highs and I was able to catch some shorts inside of this move here. And then I got to that certain point where I was like, okay, I'm more than happy with where I'm at right now to start the month. I can just sit on this and then tag in some of my other funded accounts and just secure this payout. But I got one set up in the morning for ADP. This was FOMC at two and 2.30. I caught an entry, a couple entries for both. And then here I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to show you if you go to the 
forexfactory.com, you'll be able to see that the news event was at 8.15. Here was ADP. So I saw a price moving sideways here, and then I saw a price spike up, and then I was looking for it to come down here and exceed this low. And then when I saw that happen, that is when I focused on this candle here. And you can see, we don't really get the pattern, but when I drop down to a lower time frame, we can see it right here. That last up candle, followed by that engulfing candle. And then at that point, I'm just looking for price to push down. And I'm also gonna quickly mark up the ADP. So there's 815. So we didn't have the pattern. So if you don't have the pattern and you have a news event, that's typically when I would look for the pattern to be taking place, just like we saw with FOMC. So price spiked up and then I'm looking for it to exceed this low. Once it exceeds that low, that would be the confirmation. We can see price breaking the low here. And then from that point, we're just looking for price to pull back up into this point of interest here and then continue down. Then we saw price retrace. There it is right there. It came perfectly into this point of interest and again, spiked above these relative equal highs here. As soon as it came in, it absolutely started melting, had a nice move here, and this was really putting me in a position to just stack on gains. Now I'm free rolling, coming into FOMC, that's where I was able to take advantage of that, putting my total for some of my funded accounts at just under 30,000 in three days. Well, hopefully you got value from today Today's training and now you know the main candlestick patterns that if you master in addition to self-development will make you a very successful trader and in a position to receive very lucrative payouts now obviously this will come from experience and this is easier said than done and if you're trying to do it yourself that could mean you face many problems losses and mistakes and questions so if you want to skip all that and shortcut your way to becoming a consistently profitable trader click the first link in the description. Check that out. And also, if you're interested in learning how you can become a consistently profitable trader in just eight minutes, click here. This video will show you exactly how you can do that.